arthritis. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here's the pathogenesis of rheumatoid arthritis. Basically, um, there's no exact cause, but it's said to, uh, the cause is said to be maybe environmental triggers like a virus or bacteria, uh, heredity, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So what happens is, um, this is a normal joint right here. This is your synovial membrane, uh, your tendons on the outside of that. So once that trigger um, occurs, um, T lymphocytes, which are immune cells that attack uh, uh, antibodies end up flooding the area where the joint is, uh, causing the swelling to occur. And then a tissue formation occurs. Uh, that tissue is called PANUS, P-A-N-N-U-S. And that's the red area you see here. Um, that's responsible for the deterioration of the cartilage here in the bone um, in close proximity to that cartilage. So there's a lot of pain involved when that happens. Next. These are examples of where uh, the arthritis can occur. So you see uh, the hands, the feet, the knees, the elbow. It can also be um, arthritis of the hip, the neck, which is much worse because if the bone deteriorates due to arthritis, it causes spinal cord compression and then uh, paralysis. So you know, that's probably one of the worst areas that it can occur. So just as I said, um, usually occurs between the uh, atlas and axis. And then, um, yeah, those bones sort of rub together, the cord gets compressed, and you end up tilting your head to one side. So that's one of, if, if you have a neck issue with arthritis, one of the classic signs is uh, tilting your head to one side and a bunch of pain in your occipital area of your, your skull. All right, so to diagnose arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, there's seven criteria. It's kind of small, but I'll just tell you what it is. Um, morning stiffness, uh, that has to last for about an hour. Um, you need at least uh, three joint areas to have swelling, um, and that can occur in uh, all those red circled areas like shoulder, uh, wrist, elbow, ankle, as I said before. Usually the fingers are uh, where it happens because it's a small surface area, so. Uh, right, so you need, you, one of the criteria is also having a finger, a swelling of the finger, so that would occur where the knuckles start, the metacarpophalangeal joint. Uh, the PIP joint, which is the proximal interphalangeal joint, and the last joint at the top, which is the distal interphalangeal joint. Uh, what else? You need um, bilateral and symmetrical involvement um, of any of the um, joints that were circled previously. So, what else? Rheumatoid nodules. Uh, looks, it kind of looks like tumors, but it's not. Um, that's usually a classic sign. You need positive rheumatoid factor, which is actually one of the mechanisms of the pathogenesis of rheumatoid arthritis. I don't know how much percent you need in your bloodstream, but it has to, has to be positive, however they <clears throat> determine that. And you need uh, your x-rays or MRIs to show bone erosion wherever the uh, arthritis is occurring. Oh, going back to that, you actually you don't need actually all seven. You need uh, four out of those seven criteria to occur. Okay, these are th these are the deformities that can happen since the hand is most commonly affected. Uh, you have your ulnar deviation. So when the metacarpophalangeal joints are swollen due to RA, they sort of deviate towards the ulna. Uh, you have your swan neck deformity, so if the PIP joints or DIP joints are swollen, um, you have, for swan neck deformity, hyperextension of the PIP and hyperflexion of the DIP, and then the opposite occurs for boutonniere deformity. This is my hand. <laughs> yeah. 
So I got tested for rheumatoid arthritis a month ago because I woke up one day and this happened and it was much worse than that. It was literally red, swollen, painful all the way down to the knuckle area on my finger. So I didn't know what to do. I said, hey, why don't I get tested? And then I remembered my grandma had rheumatoid arthritis, so it's most likely, <laughs> I don't know if I actually have it, but you know, it's good to know. And this is like a side view of my finger. So if you remember the boutonniere deformity, it's kind of what my finger looks like right now. Next. All right, so this is what you need in order to <coughs> treat RA, you need good rest, especially during the acute phase. You need your regular eight to 10 hours of sleep. Exercise is good, especially for the subacute and inactive forms of RA. So you should really limit it to maybe walking or biking. Don't stress out too much with exercise and physical therapy. Next. Oh, you also need drug treatment. This is actually pretty important because um, all those other things alone probably won't do you any good. So these are just some some of the drugs you can take, you know, your regular over-the-counter stuff like Tylenol to relieve pain, NSAIDs uh, like ibuprofen and aspirin that reduces pain and inflammation, corticosteroids uh, which reduce pain and inflammation and slows the joint damage that occurs, uh, DMARDs, that's a disease modifying anti rheumatic drugs. So that's it's actually a staple of RA treatment. Um, it blocks or inhibits the inflammation, the joint destruction and the cartilage damage. Then you have your biologic response modifiers that sort of just you know work to alter how RA occurs if you have flare ups or et cetera, et cetera. Uh, other treatments are Synovectomy, because it's most likely that your soft tissue will be inflamed with RA. So that's just an example of a hip synovectomy. And um, cortisone injections, which I also I also experienced firsthand because my knees a long time ago were, I don't know if it was due to RA or not, but it was pretty swollen too and I got a cortisone injection that worked out pretty well. I haven't had flare-ups since that time. So. So there's no cure for um, rheumatoid arthritis. Um, the prognosis is pretty, um, it varies. There's obviously stages, acute, subacute, and active. Um, what you wanna do is, like I said before, treat it with drugs, therapy, bed rest, et cetera, et cetera. These are the main goals. These are the staple goals for RA. You want to reduce joint pain and inflammation maintain joint mobility, prevent joint destruction, and deformity. So that takes aggressive drug therapy, um, you know, exercising, bed rest. And here are some, this is like an outline I found kind of last minute yesterday, um, how to treat the different stages of RA. So with the acute phase, you want to, uh, you want the modality to be a cold application because if you overheat a site with RA, it might lead to intra-articular damage. Um, you want to you want to limit your exercises to isometric exercises, so that means the muscle length doesn't change, but it contracts. So if you, for example, had a shoulder uh, issue with RA, you maybe hold out like a dumbbell and for like a couple seconds, do like maybe two or three reps to get used to it. Active range of motion, uh, so that means that you are performing joint movement. So if you have like an elbow injury, just, you know, touch your shoulders, that's an example. And gentle massage manual therapy. Uh, the goals for that, since it's acute and you re it really swells up uh, during that period, you wanna decrease edema, pain, improve healing, increase range of motion. Uh, your subacute phase, you can do more because the swelling will probably go down. So now you want to improve function. Um, now you can apply heat, uh, electrical stimulation, laser therapy, 
Now your movements are more isotonic, so you can do more resistance training. Uh, you can do more stretching. And the goals for that is for flexibility, functional mobility, and muscle tone. And finally, the chronic, which is the symptoms last more than two weeks. You can do electrical nerve stimulation, uh, strengthening, stabilization exercises, and myofascial release, which is basically um, just really aggressive stretching um, massage for the surface area underneath the skin. So that way, once you do that, you can allow more muscle and tissue underneath to move more freely. Um, you can do the, foot, the goals of uh, the chronic treatment is for functional improvement of ADLs and to restore normal tissue length. And these are some prosthetics or thoses you can use um, to sort of stabilize you know, acute pain. Um, you have your metacarpal phalangeal splint and to perform ADLs, you've got your crutches, your walkers, your cane. These are some ergonomic tools to help out with those with rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, you have your, your gripping key handle, so that way you don't have to, if you have a finger issue with the RA, you don't have to really put pressure to turn the key in such a small little space. Um, your utensils, so they're angled, so that way, I actually don't know why they're angled, but I guess it works better. Put it simply and um, you have your um, suction grab bar for the bathroom mm -hmm. so people with knee problems or balance issues can just you know more easily get out and into the tub so self-management so that's that's very uh, important for um, treating RA you need proper body mechanics and positioning you have to pace yourself during exercise uh, maintain your program, protect your joint, conserve energy, and monitor your symptoms. Alright, so overall there's a balance that needs to occur with um, your treatment of rheumatoid arthritis. So you want to take your rest breaks, you want to decrease your activity level, especially during the acute phase, but if you don't put forth the effort in, you know, strengthening your muscles, strengthening your joints, and you know, you're lazy, you're immobile, you know, those, those tissues underneath the muscles or in close proximity to it just keep on swelling. You'll have more flare-ups and you, know, you want to be able to keep your, keep your flare-ups, I guess, more spread out or you, know, you want to decrease your pain, your swelling as much as possible by constantly supplying it with blood. And most importantly, the PT and PTA have to collaborate because since RA is one of those up and down uh, diseases, you know, you want to really be focused on how the patient or client is progressing. So, you know, we, we all have to keep track of those type of patients because anything can happen. You got to pay attention to the neck even though it's overlooked. And, yeah.